why most knife users miss the angle and how to fix it instantly. So I posted a short on this, the Victorinox dual knife sharpener recently, and my comment section absolutely exploded. So many of you were saying the same thing. You're using the wrong angle. That's way too shallow. You'll ruin the edge. And I get it. I really do. In this case, it was mainly the camera position and lens exaggerating the angle. So for example, this is directly underneath and it's vertical. As I move it to one side, you can see it's still vertical from my perspective, but from the camera perspective, it looks like it's at an angle. So um, that and the combination of the wide angle lens I was using on the iPhone, that made it look worse than it was. But here's the thing, and the entire reason for this video, the angle I used was correct for that knife. And understanding why is the secret that most knife owners completely miss. So there's a reason why your pocket knives might feel dull or why they drag through a cut or even worse, why the edge chips even doing light work and you end up with a dented blade edge. It's probably not the knife, it's probably the hidden geometry. The good news is this is easy to understand and fix. And even with such a simple sharpener as this, it only takes a few minutes. So you can do it even before your coffee gets cold. So looking at this hidden geometry. So what is the angle, the angle that we're talking about? So here we're talking about the knife edge angle. So the degree are the where the two sides of the blade meet to give you this cutting edge along here. This dictates everything from razor sharp slicing to brute force toughness. So the difference between a razor blade and an ax head. This is the absolute business end of any knife. Let's take a closer look. So I got my protractor out. Well, actually, I, I didn't have a protractor. It's a, it's a very long time since I was at school. So I got my son to 3D print me one, which is this. And I use this to work out some angles. So if you think of this as the sharp end of the knife, with the zero here being the middle and if that was vertical and this is the angle or the blade edge and you can see that for different angles you get a different level of sharpness so if we were to start say with a razor blade or in this case a utility blade now i'm not going to get it that close on here but you can see how thin the blade is and how narrow the angle is. So the angle on this is probably 10 or 12 degrees or maybe slightly less on each side. So 20 to 24 degrees total. It's very acute and it's super thin. So this glides through soft materials really easily. So just showing you with a piece of paper a soft, relatively soft material, and I'm not pulling the blade, I'm just pushing it through. So it glides through that sort of cut really easily with little resistance. The problem is that it's also quite fragile. So this would be no good for chopping wood. So let's look at an ax. This is my halter force and you can see the edge here is quite different so it's thicker and it's a much less acute angle so the angle here is probably 25 to 30 degrees each side so if you were to look at that if we were to blow that up and look at that there it's probably much closer it's probably somewhere between the 20 and the 30 degrees so hopefully you can see that. Now, this is no good for slicing. So if I take the piece of paper again, I'm not gonna push it through. But if I'm chopping wood, this will work really well. 
So the angle is for impact and durability. This is a heavy duty chopper. So the 50 to 60 degree total angle here is much better. What about your typical EDC knife? So here's, well, one of the typical pocket knives. Now this is quite an old one and it's been really badly sharpened in the past. This is one I got from Flea Fair. It's a vintage Victorinox Solo Alox or Army One. And it, it's been sharpened uh, appallingly in the past. But that doesn't matter, you know? This will still cut okay. So just showing on here, it's, I've not sharpened it at all since I got it. Even pulling, it's not going to, it's not going to cut too well. There's a lot of tearing. You can hear it. It's, it's a much different, different noise. So we'll have a go at sharpening this in a minute. But for this, you want it to be somewhere between the razor or the, or the utility blade and the axe. So probably somewhere between about 17 to 22 degrees. Now, um, some people sharpen theirs to 15. It's gonna be a little bit more brittle then. From the factory, Victorinox give a 20 degree on each side blade edge angle. And that's probably typical. Now, there's a really good video by Felix Imler. It came out a couple of weeks ago and he looks at 15 versus 20 versus 17 and a half degrees. So I'll put a link in the description and uh, after this one, go and watch it, it's, it's really good. So the angle you need really depends on your use. So for bushcraft, you would go for a, a higher angle, but for a normal pocket knife, then probably somewhere between 15 and 20 degrees is, is probably perfect for you. The other thing to remember as well is to consider the grind on the blade as well. So on the Victorinox, it's a fairly flat grind. If you want something even more slicey, then maybe this Boca Atlas, then this has a concave grind. So it's super slicey. And then you can see it's got a secondary bevel just to make it a little bit stronger. So you might wanna consider the grind of the blade as well as the actual edge. You don't need to be a pro sharpener or have expensive kit to fix this. The first thing is the marker trick. So I'm sure you've seen this in, a, in other videos and just take a permanent marker and mark along the blade edge on both sides. Okay, uh, I'm not sure how well this is gonna show up on here. It probably just looks dark. Then next, you take your, your sharpener and work out what angle you want it to be. Now, now, there are a couple of ways to do this. And one of the ways is you could use this. So I, I'm, it's difficult to show from the vertical, but if I was, if I had this standing up, then if I wanted to get 20 degrees, I angle the sharpening stone at this, and then I hold the blade vertically to get the right angle on here. So, I don't know if we're gonna see this. So I hold the blade vertically. Now, how that looks from above, and again, please remember that, that the angle gets exaggerated. So if I take that to about 20 degrees, and then I bring this down vertically. Now it's going to exaggerate it. So please don't write in about it. So then we do a couple of passes each side and I do it the other way as well. And again, I'm fairly used to doing this. So I've got about my 20 degree angle. Make sure you get the full length of the knife, including the tip. Then we can have a look to, s and if you can see this. So now, now this blade's a bit wobbly, but 
I didn't want to do this on a on a new knife. But if you look along it, so if the marker is gone from just the edge, then you know that the angle is too high. If you've missed the edge, but you've got the shoulder of where the bevel starts, then you know that the angle is too shallow. So this is a great way to do it. Now, with these hand sharpeners, it can be really difficult to get the angle right. So you, you could use a visual guide like this and have it standing up next to it. And then I match it like that. That, that can work really well and it's, it's super cheap. Another option that I found online, and I'm not sure you can buy these, but th this is a 3D print and my son printed it for me. It's on the printables website. And what's good is that it's designed specifically for the dual knife sharpener. And it's got two angles. One is the 20 degrees, so that's the factory edge. The other is the 15 degrees which is the sharper one. Now, according to Felix, I think 17 and a half is about right, but I'm gonna go with the 20 because that's that's the factory edge. So, and again, please remember that the angle may be exaggerated. So on here, I can, this sets the angle and it's fairly easy to hold a knife vertically and then I just pull it down. And with this, it doesn't take too many strokes. Um, I'm just honing it. I'm not trying to do a major resharpen on this. So I'm just doing a few strokes each side. We can see that the marker pen has mainly come off. Let me just get a piece of paper just to see if it's done any, if it's made it better. So, that was just a few strokes. Uh, I just do a couple more each side. And another quick test. You can already see that that's much better. So with a few more goes, and that would at least be sharp, if not, if not a perfect blade. And the key thing is consistency. So keeping the strokes light and letting the stone do the work. So keeping it nice and light, making sure you cover all of the blade from the start right through to the tip. And the other thing with consistency, now here I've got a good angle guide, but I'm moving my whole arm, I'm keeping my wrist locked. That's quite important as well. So as you can see, it's very easy to fix this. E even though this is an old knife, it was cheap, and uh, this is very serviceable as an EDC knife. What are the take home points from this? Well, um, Rather than focusing on the steel, and particularly whether you have an expensive knife or not, if you check the angle and get that right, any knife will cut well. Even the softer steels like this Inox will cut really well. You might need to sharpen more often though, that's the only thing with a softer knife. So remember to use the marker trick and to lock in the angle. If you have got an angle guide, then use that or just get practiced at using it by hand or use a visual guide like this. Now, if you still find it difficult, then I have been sent an adjustable fixed angle sharpener by Sharple. I'll put a picture here and I've tried it and it seems to be really good. I'll do a review video in a couple of weeks time for that. In the meantime, let me know your sharpening tips and comments. If you found this useful or interesting, please subscribe to get more EDC tips, more sharpening tips. And why not watch this video on stropping because that's the other thing that's really important, strop rather than sharpen because you remove less steel. So watch this video on stropping or this playlist here on sharpening. 
Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.